Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're asked to prove that the limit as x approaches a of the square root of x is equal to the square root of a if a is greater than zero. So what we have to do is use the fact that the absolute value of the square root of x minus the square root of a is equal to the absolute value of x minus a over the square root of x minus the square root of a. So we're going to use the precise definition of a limit, which states that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l if for every epsilon you could pick greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero, such that if zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So the first thing we can do is we can ignore this part of the statement and simply say that the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta. And this is just the general x is approaching a. Um, however, a is actually the value that we're approaching here, so that stays the same. For this inequality, we have f of x is the square root of x, and l is the square root of a. And the absolute value of this is less than epsilon. And we're using the fact that this is equal to the absolute value of x minus a over the square root of x minus the square root of a. And therefore, we can say that this is less than epsilon. And so we have the absolute value of x minus a times 1 over the square root of x minus the square root of a is less than epsilon. And so we have the absolute value of x minus a, and it's less than delta and epsilon, but we have this thing attached right here. And we can't just solve for absolute value of x minus a here. So we're going to say, okay, let's take a constant c, such that c is greater than 1 over the square root of x minus the square root of a. So how do we find that? Well, if um, this is true, then the absolute value of x minus a times c is less than epsilon and therefore x minus a is less than epsilon over c, and delta is therefore equal to epsilon over c. So we have to find a value of c that works. And so what we do is we pick a tester value for delta. And say, okay, let's say x minus a is less than one. Let's say delta is equal to one. This means that x minus a is less than one and greater than negative one. Adding a to uh, all sides of this inequality, we get that x is less than a plus one, and it's greater than a minus one. Then we say we can take the square root of all of these and subtract the square root of a. So we have the square root of a minus one minus the square root of a is less than the absolute value, or, or sorry, um, the square root of x minus the square root of a is less than the square root of a plus one minus the square root of a. Okay, and then we have to say, okay, we take one over this, one over the square root of a minus one minus the square root of a is less than the square root of x minus the square root of a, is less than the square root of a plus one minus the square root of a. Um, sorry, one over is what we just did here. And therefore we have a inequality for this value, right? And we can say therefore that the absolute value of one over the square root of x minus the square root of a is less than um, one over the square root of a plus one minus the square root of a. Right, that's the greatest um, absolute value, and all the ranges, all the values in this range are less than that value. Therefore, if, um, sorry, there's no absolute value here. If 1 over the square root of x minus the square root of a is less than this, and it's less than c, then this is equal to c. Right, it's not necessarily the only value that c can equal, however, this is just a value of c that we're going to choose. And therefore, the absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon over this, one over square root of a plus one minus the square root of a. Therefore, x minus, the absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon times the denominator, square root of a plus one minus the square root of a. And if the absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon times this, and it's less than delta, then we can say that delta equals um, epsilon times the square root of a plus one minus the square root of a. Sorry, it's getting a little crowded here, but we have limited space for this page. However, we already said that delta equals one, right? That was our tester value. So it depends on what epsilon is, whether or not, and what a is, like realistically, whether or not delta is equal to this, delta is equal to this. We say therefore that delta equals the minimum of these two values. The minimum of epsilon times the square root of a plus one minus the square root of a, and one. And depending on what epsilon is, this might be the smaller value, or one might be the smaller value, but whichever one is the smaller value is the one that is delta. 
And therefore, since we have proven that there's a relationship between delta and epsilon for any epsilon that you choose, we can say that the limit as x approaches a of the square root of x is equal to the square root of a if a is greater than zero.